Welcome. I've often found that one of the most neglected Easter traditions within the Protestant Church is the remembrance of Holy Saturday. This is the day between Good Friday and Easter Sunday, wherein Christ lay buried in the grave. Now, according to the Apostles' Creed, this is also where he descended into hell. And so what are we to make of this phrase? What are we to make of this concept that Christ descended into hell? How does that help us come to a deeper understanding of the gospel, of the Easter narrative, and what does it mean for the nature of God and the nature of salvation? Um, so I'm going to do this by looking at some quotes from Jürgen Maltman. Now, I think Maltman's a theologian who is especially helpful on this aspect. Um, in my previous video on Jürgen Maltman, I talked about his rejection of the classic doctrine of divine impassibility, the idea that God cannot suffer or suffer change. Um, now, you'll see that tie into a lot of these where Maltman stresses that Holy Saturday is about God's solidarity with all those who suffer, um, where God reaches into the very pit of our alienation and our estrangement from God um, in, the, in the image of hell, where he comes and meets us in the very, very darkest and the most God-forsaken place uh, that we can ever imagine. And so Maltman reflects on these in a number of very fascinating ways, um, but I hope that these can kind of shed some light on the significance of Holy Saturday uh, for you, because like I said, I, I think it's one of the most neglected aspects of the Easter tradition, um, especially in the Protestant faith. There's a lot of liturgical beauty to this day, uh, especially within the Eastern Orthodox and the Catholic uh, traditions. But for some reason in the uh, Protestant church, we kind of skip over Holy Saturday and primarily just focus on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. But I think that there's a lot of theological and devotional um, importance to remembering Holy Saturday and, and reflecting some upon its significance. Um, and so I'm going to read two quotes from Maltman's short book first. I'll read four quotes in total. Um, but the first two are from Jesus Christ for today's world. Since Christ descended into hell, what we experience as hell and everything else that can be called hell has been objectively transformed. Now there is someone who has brought hope into hell. Dante is confuted. There is someone who has thrown hell open and led out the dead, as we see him doing in every Orthodox Easter icon. If hell was the place of God-forsakenness ever since Christ's descent into hell, it has been this no more. If in hell the devilish spirits of torment rule over human beings ever since the resurrection of the dead Christ, they have been robbed of their victory. I am told to believe in hell, said Berdyov once but not that there is anybody in it. Let me say this, because Christ was in hell, no one who is in hell is without hope anymore. But this means that for Christian faith, hell is no longer what it was once supposed to be, religion's everlasting torture chamber. Its gates are open. Its walls have been broken down. In hell, the trumpet signaling liberation has already been heard. The person who sticks to Christ has no need to fear hell, nor can that person ever threaten others with the tortures of hell. If anyone thinks that for biblical reasons we still have to talk about hell, believers will answer, O hell, where is thy victory? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 55, 57. I especially love that quote that Maltman uses here, that I am told to believe in hell, but not that there is anyone in it. Um, there's something quite beautiful about this in Maltman's thought, um, and later in the book he continues to explain it a little bit more thoroughly um, and, and explain a little bit more what he means by this. And now this is more explicitly where Maltman gets to his universalism of the cross. It's easy to misunderstand Maltman here, um, but I think we have to be a bit more gracious and charitable to his understanding. For Maltman, as for Bart and a lot of other theologians, universalism is ultimately a question that God will answer. So it's not necessarily one that theologians or uh, believers, we have to feel like we have a definitive answer to it um, because it's ultimately God's answer. Uh, it's, an, it's a question that God will answer one day. And so for that, Maltman says a very familiar phrase within a lot of the universalist circles where he says, I, I don't think I'm a universalist, but God may be one. And so that's kind of where Maltman is going with a lot of this. And it really resolves around the universalism of the cross and a lot of it on this reflection that if Christ has descended into hell, there is no hopeless place even in hell. Um, and so I'll continue and read this uh, quote that kind of explore, explains this a little bit more. Uh, and so this is again from Jesus Christ for today's world. Do we know anyone who is in hell? Would we tell a mother weeping at her son's grave that her son is in hell because he never found faith while he was alive? 
we should respond to the first question with an embarrassed silence. And we would not answer yes to the second one either. But I know someone who was in hell. It is Jesus Christ, who the creed says descended into hell. When we were thinking about the tortured Christ, we asked, what does this article in the creed mean? When did Christ go through hell? And we saw that in the past two answers have been given. The earlier interpretation said that after his death, Christ descended to the realm of the dead to preach to them the gospel of their redemption and to deliver them. Luther looked at it differently, maintaining that Christ endured the torments of hell between Gethsemane and Golgotha in his profound forsakenness by God. But whatever we may think about Christ's descent into hell, Luther was right when he said, Regard not hell and the eternity of torment in thyself, nor these things in themselves, nor yet in those who are damned. Look upon the face of Christ, who for thy sake descended into hell and was forsaken by God as one who is damned eternally. As he said on the cross, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? See, in him thy hell is vanquished. Because Christ was in hell and endured its torments, there is hope in hell for redemption. Because Christ was raised to life from hell, hell's gates are open and its walls have been broken down. Though I make my bed in hell, you are there, and there hell is not hell any longer. O hell, where is thy victory? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 55, 57. So we see with this that the celebration of Holy Saturday centers around God's radical solidarity with us, even in the midst of hell, even in the midst of the pit of our darkness and alienation from God, even in the midst of our deep despair and our existential dread. Christ has descended into those places. He has entered into our God forsakenness. He has entered into the very pit of, of hell for our sakes. And therefore, hell is not without hope. And it is no longer hell because it is a place permeated with Christ's presence. It is robbed of all of its power. Its gates are thrown wide open and light has been brought in because Christ has descended there. So that's the beautiful and joyful pronouncement of Holy Saturday, the pronouncement that Christ descended into the lowest depths of our humanity. And I like that Maltman makes a point here to stress that hell isn't necessarily an eschatological concept, but there are hells on earth. And elsewhere in Maltman's theology, he makes this point that where is hell within history? Where is hell today? Hell, hell is in the Holocaust. Hell is in the poverty and the disease-ridden world that we live in. Hell is in everyone that struggles and suffers under uh, torment and under oppression. And so if we want to know where Christ is in the world today, he too has descended into hell in our day. This is not something that just happened 2,000 years ago. Christ has still made his bed with those who are in hell. He has made his bed with those who suffer the torments of the oppressor's wrongs, who suffers the weight of, of sickness and disease and pain. And so that is such a beautiful meditation, and, and Maltman's theology, perhaps above any other theologian I know, uh, really stresses God's solidarity to such a beautiful degree um, that we know that not only has Christ come into that place of suffering and that God suffers with us, but that that very suffering has been taken into the very heart of the triune life and love of God. Dante was wrong, according to Maltman, because even hell is not without hope. And this results in the profound proclamation of God's love for us. Now, Maltman goes on to summarize this in a few helpful points, and this is from his later book, The Coming of God. Christ's descent into hell therefore means, even in the experience of hell, you are there. Psalms 139, 8. Christ's descent into hell means, you have suffered the experience of hell for us, so as to be beside us in our experiences of hell. Christ's descent into hell means, finally, hell and death have been gathered up and ended in God. Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 54, 57. So there is no hell where Christ has not gone before us. There is no suffering where God has not suffered with us. This is our supreme hope proclaimed by the Easter narrative. It is that God is with us, and that God is with us not as a God against us, but as God 
for us. And so with this realization, we see what makes the gospel truly good news. The gospel is not a threat, but a hope and a joyful proclamation. It is not about beating the world into submission by the threat of torment in hell, but rather the proclamation that Christ has overcome hell, that Christ has overcome the grave, that Christ has entered into our alienation, into our darkness, into the darkness of our atomic mind, and he has overcome the sinful condition by meeting us in the midst of our suffering. God is not far off and distant, but here. That is the story of Emmanuel, of God with us. And that is the crux of the gospel and the crux of the Easter's narrative, that God has gone so far, not just to come close to humanity, but to truly penetrate into the very depth of our human condition in all of our forsakenness and all of our alienation. And so that is what's so beautiful about the gospel, that Christ has not merely come near, but he has truly become one with us and suffered with us at the pit of our existence. And so no hell and no death and no existential dread and no doubt and no despair has not been embraced and overcome in Jesus Christ. Now, finally, Maltman echoes Athanasius's beautiful phrase that the resurrected Christ makes life a continual festival. And this is indeed what Easter is all about. And so Maltman writes, To gaze on the risen one makes life a feast. But it is only the gaze on the one who was crucified and who descended into hell that makes the whole of life a feast, and a perpetual feast, a feast which even death does not terminate, so that it is indeed a feast without end. And so I hope you take some time to meditate upon these truths today, um, on this Easter weekend, and even every day. Um, to meditate upon the goodness of the gospel, the realities of Holy Saturday, and the beauty of what it means for us um, that Christ was buried and lay in the grave, that he descended into hell. So I want to just say uh, Happy Easter to everyone, and thank you so much for watching. Um, As according to Brendan Manning, they say in the countrysides of France, the love of God is folly. And that is a phrase which means that the grace of God is so extravagant and radical and so beautiful. And so I pray that the folly of God, the foolishness that confounds the wise, would be your strength and your joy today. And so thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.